On today's Men of the Apes, the series finale of Sense8 has finally come out, and I cannot be happier. They greenlit the sequel without a story in mind. They just wanted to equal an unexpected goal mine. He said, oh no, as Heston said, I got to go. These are just some of the facts you ought to know as we go. Beneath the Men of the Apes. Beneath the minute of the apes Beneath the minute of the apes The only good human is a dead human Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Apes movies one minute at a time. I'm Todd. I'm so happy on this bright, beautiful day to have Sean and Richard across hey. from me. Hey, guys. Hey. Now, if things sound a little different in here, what's going on? We are at uh, what? How did you rephrase it? Zeus, Zeus North. North. Yeah, <laughs> we are at my house. So if in you Oklahoma, hear, yeah, in the, Oklahoma, the shadow of Oklahoma. Yes, it's what? Uh, let's see, half hour from here. Se- no, it's about seventy miles from here. Half hour, huh. depending it's on how you drive. <laughs> depending on how you drive. <laughs> um, if you hear dogs, if you hear wives, if you hear daughters, Kids, that's yeah. because we're at a house today. We do not have comic books surrounding us, but we're going to get back into it and tackle minute 31 of uh, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Beneath Sean, page, yes. tell us what's going on. All right, so in minute 31, we have Zero closing the door, front door and ends with Cornelius saying, they will dissect you and kill you in that order. Let's take a listen to minute 31. Get me out of here, please. I've seen the delicate, humane way they treat humans around here. I don't much care for it. Have you a horse? Yeah, from the scrub. Well, uh, I'd better get you another set of clothes, the kind fit for humans, like yourself. You'll pass. Get rid of this. And this, too. If you are caught by the gorillas, you must remember one thing. What's that? Never to speak. What the hell would I have to say to a gorilla? Oh, but you don't understand. Only apes can speak. Not her and not you. If they catch you speaking, they will dissect you and they will kill you in that order. All right, as of minute 31, we have three living humans, four dead humans, one dead ape, a shrewdness of apes, and a gaggle of humans. So I, I want to jump in right away and say that this minute, is shot almost like a sitcom. So it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the camera pulls back, it follows in, it does all these things. I felt like I was watching an episode of Friends as Cornelius and Zero were seeing their friend that they were hiding in the closet kind of situation. I kind of felt like it was. Oh, that's, a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, felt like it, now, yeah. Yeah. I felt like a little Three's Company where they got Mr. Roper yes. out of the, the room, apartment, they closed the door, and they instantly go to the front gate Coming and look through the door. windows. Yeah, they scurry. They, they, they shut scur- the door and they kind of scurry over to make sure that he's gone. I mean, mm-hmm. that's not. Is he gone? We can now reveal the people behind him in the hiding in the closet there's nothing suspicious about as soon as you walk out you see people staring through the front window at you or saying is he gone yet <laughs> it everything about it even to that extent the, the way it's set up with the front window that's sort of like you could expect mr roper to walk to up look, and go, look right back in the window what are you guys looking at <laughs> Close the curtains or something, people. I mean, I it, was like, it was like, oh, he's gone. Cool. She does pull the, the, the cloth that she was using to kind of hide mm-hmm. the plaster, which is clearly not on the mask. But that was the intention of the, ma- the, yeah. the cloth to cover this, this plaster. Um, even, was, even the acting in it is, to that point, is played very, very sitcom. Over, over it's the top, very, yeah. Uh, they're shuffling about. It's, I really feel so bad jumping all over the direction in this movie, but this the staging, the blocking, even with this, I, I have this feeling that that studio was just sitting there and saying, you've got to push, and that's why very little imagination was put to it how they did it. feels very TV director it rather does. than movie director. Well, she swipes, she swipes the curtain open, and Brent can't just walk out by himself. She's got to grab him by the arm. And yank him out of that uh, closet or kitchen Pantry or wherever, or he's, whatever, wherever yeah. he's hiding in. Yeah. That's a good point. It's almost like time and time again, the direction is we need to convey a sense of urgency. Right. And instead True. of actually put urgency in what is happening, the characters are trying to act urgently. There's no urgency in pulling him out. No. What, what, I mean, what? So we just had this giant, you know, conversation between Zaius and Cornelius and Zira, where 
uh, Zayas is saying that he's going to go to the Forbidden Zone with um, uh, Ursus. Ursus. Mm -hmm. I don't see why Brent and Nova need to be in a hurry all of a sudden. There's is there a reason why he wants to get out of there? I mean, that was conveyed a little bit earlier, but why don't see why they're so frantic to move them on? So I, I want to go ahead and introduce a concept to this, and this is going to span for me probably about the next two weeks. Cause I, I'll be honest, I, I've already watched ahead into those well, minutes, just making my notes to go back into this. I have not seen any of the planet of the apes movies all the way through. I have not seen, I've seen parts of the first one. Obviously I've watched the first one at this point. Right. I have, I've seen up to this point in the next one, and I know nothing about the future ones until we get to the Marky Mark movies. Sean is very much our innocent virgin of yeah. this whole thing, in, where Richard and I have seen it and kind of had the... 40-year-old virgin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, you know what? And I, Richard, I know that we've talked about this. So if you're new to it, you, you don't watch these as much as I have, but you've seen them. Yes. So to be fair, to go back to my point, yeah. I want to introduce a thought that to me really does touch the next 10 minutes because I went ahead and made my 10 minutes of notes. Mm -hmm. These these scenes over the next 10 minutes feel like they are taken from numerous drafts where no one really thought through the reason for the scenes occurring because numerous times something happens here that basically essentially happens later that could have been married or flipped and been more effective. It, you have so much action, so many things going on that don't really do anything. They mean nothing. And to me, this entire scene is something that later on when we get about 10 minutes ahead, I'm going to bring it up again. And I just want to keep pointing out that these kind of things, this is poorly executed storytelling because why does Brent even feel urgent? Why are they even in this room, etc.? Okay. So I want to introduce that thought as we go ahead. So, right. she, so she yanks him out yep. in the closet. And um, Is that a statement on anything, being yanked out of the closet? Metaphorically, I wondered <laughs> about that, but they Does certainly wouldn't have done that. Does not even grab Nova. <laughs> Well, Nova just kind of saunters into the scene from this closet, right? Well, let's mm -hmm. be quite honest. Over the next couple of minutes, Nova kind of does everything on her own. Oh, my yeah. goodness. The, there, there's a, there's a, a bit. Well, we'll have to get to that yeah. in a minute. Anyway, so, so he yanks her, she yanks him out and says, let, let me finish this and get you out of here. Right. And Nova just kind of casually like walks into the scene. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and it's like Nova asks, has the reaction that we all have in this movie. Like, is it's really happening? Is it even? Right. Is this Blah. a dream? Is this real life? I'm sorry, Richard. Go ahead. So, so Zira asks, have you a horse? Um, and he says, up in the scrub. And she's preparing this, this movement for him leaving, I guess, to go on his quest to continue to find Taylor. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, she happens to have human clothes. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what I was going to ask. Zero wants Brent to wear human clothes fit for a human. Why do they even dress humans? We don't dress apes. Oh, well, hang on. Maybe that she and Cornelius in their young marriage do a little bit of role play. <laughs> these are my you human clothes. <laughs> you wear your human clothes. So, Can you imagine the, these two chimpanzees dressed in human clothes? Like being, is that the equivalent of slave Leia? Is yeah. That you dress like a human? <laughs> Slave human. <laughs> so do we, d does this to a certain extent, because she's able to pull these clothes out of her own closet, give us a sense of why the humans wear clothes now? Yeah. Is this is a it possibility come that from they're the, the one inadvertently providing them clothing? Could be. I, you know, I, I well, think we asked about that in the first film. Why are they covering why genitals? They exactly. Yeah. Because, other than the censors don't want them yeah. wearing it. And I think, didn't we bring up that in the production, that the original production had them as naked or topless or something like that so i'm sure we understand why but that's a great point yeah, maybe we, the apes have introduced the idea that we don't want to see you like that you need to have a little bit of humility which would explain why she happens to have a set of clothes in her house but why I still, would she take her why would she take human clothes to her house i still like to go back to the fact that she had a little bit of thing for taylor she really has an ape oh there would be things late i think in later uh, minutes we can talk about that because yeah. i've watched the next couple of minutes to make notes for this right but yeah i have some notes about that too yeah so when you're, you're you're comment about it being kind of frantic and kind of almost situational comedy we do get that moment where she like pulls at the dog Taylor's tags ta dog tags uh -huh. and tells him to get rid of it and then pulls at nova's and then runs it over just yanks nova's off and Nova's very blasé about it. You know, I would almost think a primitive would be even more. 
a- aggressive against yes. somebody getting in their space or, in, in their space or something that is touching know, well, me. She does. She does. When, when Zira grabs them and yanks them off, Nova does reach at them briefly as if they right. are a memory to her. I she, also, does, she does respond a little bit where she kind of you're takes absolutely them and right. Then Zira walks away with them. I would just and this is again juxtaposing on the ideas of filmmaking today. I would love to see her fight to, you know, don't you dare, you know, more. This is my prized possession. Yeah. I, I, have, I have memories for this thing. But if you go back and look when when. Zero yanks it off and then gives it back to her. She then looks at her hand like, I didn't mean to yank that off. To which I'm wondering if the tearing of the dog tags was an accident that she was supposed to pull it at just like she did at Brent and it accidentally broke and Could then she be. gave it back. And then literally, if you watch it, she looks at her hand for a second and then walks off. Yeah. And Could the, be. The, the next little moment, and this, it's kind of interesting. This is a minute where we just have gone through like 40, 45 seconds of this minute. This minute is surprisingly quick. Yeah. There's not a whole, there's a lot that happens, but not a whole lot that happens. It was just, yeah. it was very, it moved by very, very quickly when I'm, when we're looking at this now. So, um, Cornelius warns him, uh, if you're caught by gorillas, remember one thing, what's that? Not to speak, never to speak. And I thought Brent's line was really funny. What, what would I have, hell to would I have to say, say to a gorilla? gorilla. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ook, ook. Was that, was that, was it meant to be a joke? But his, his, his face was kind of just, uh, no, I think I, that's, I don't think it's a joke as much as it's a smart assy kind of thing. Like somehow I'm above them. I mean, if we, I I mean, we're a half hour into this movie, but if you think about it, um, Brent's been on this planet for a a day or two. We don't know when the crash happened and how long that recovery happened. He and Skipper. I think from the point that Nova found him to here is a day or so. So he still is in shock about seeing. All these chimpanzees, True. orangutans, and gorillas talking. So when all of a sudden he finds out that the humans aren't talking, but apes are talking to him. Again, if a there there's a old a, a statement that a, a theory that if a tiger could talk English, we wouldn't understand it because it would have a completely different mindset than me. Mm-hmm. It might have the same language, but its whole philosophy on life is different. Because it's about eating and and f***ing and dying and and killing things. Yeah, I want to be a tiger. No I know. doubt. I'm, I'm waiting. <laughs> and remember to edit this episode. Yeah. But you know, the tiger has a completely different lifestyle than us and has a whole different mindset. Even if it spoke English, we wouldn't understand what they're thinking. So this guy is thinking the same thing. A gorilla can talk. That's great. What would I have to say to it? Because we have nothing in common. It, well, yeah, There's a musical waiting to happen with all the analogies you make <laughs> to the different animals. It's almost like, what was that, Dr. Doolittle? Is yeah. that who it was that uh-huh. talked to the animals? Uh, you are the Dr. Doolittle of this show. I'm just trying to crack this gorilla code. So Cornelius says never to speak, and he says, what the hell would I have to say to a gorilla? Um, and it's just this, I guess Brent doesn't realize that humans can't talk yet that moment was a weird yeah he hasn't, he, been, he hasn't met he's only he, met one human he's at this seen point. some and he should have seen some in the plaza right yeah. and he's got potentially the talking well he, it was he's just also a, met one that hasn't spoken a damn yeah, word hasn't to said him. anything it was it was the delivery was just so hostile yeah that i didn't understand uh, it, i didn't understand it was meant to be a comedic line right or meant to just kind of show the discourse. I, I think, think it was kind of, kind of both. As you throw this in, it makes me think this has got to be a Franciscus rewrite moment where he's trying to put interjection in that is simply to make his character different. Because it, it, it looked, I mean, he looked, his expression, his, his anger, that it was almost like a flash of anger. Right. Uh, really wasn't fitting in with... with uh, the dialogue. It was right. just odd to me. So what do you do with a character? If you have Taylor in the first, who's bewildered by that, he's on a planet of the apes, right? What, what is the opposing emotion reaction that you give to a I, character? If they're not bewildered, I he's mean, trying angry? to make them angry know, and sarcastic yeah. and it, it doesn't work. Yeah. I do want to say, we've mentioned before the stuff in the background. I really love that small uh, lawgiver. Oh yeah. The the one it's almost back. like a Buddha. And it's almost it, what it remind me of. There's a wonderful documentary on uh, Netflix about uh, Korea and how Kim Jong Un and his whole family. The all of the subjects actually have pictures of the the emperors in their homes and bow to them. And it just it wow. it was like very gods or whatever. yeah, it, like in a very subtle way. I thought, oh, it's their little Buddha Jesus Christ moment. Just I love that in the background. Other thing I want to bring up that bandage she puts on Brent's arm. <laughs> Is that a pre-made? Do they have band-aids? Because that thing just yeah. immediately went on. Perfectly on, yeah. yeah well, she was having such a problem with it before, and now it's like, fine. Yep. Nope. There it is. Whoop! I, what I did like about 
this kind of revisiting uh, this scene, having them move across their house, their apartment, was how ornate and lived in and how natural their house looked. Mm-hmm. The interior looked compared to the stuff we saw in the first movie. I agree. Oh, yeah, it was we very talk, barren in the first I mean, one. We, we, yeah. And we talk about, you know, budgets and things like that. But they went to some, some effort to kind of fill out right. Zero and Canino's house to make it look. 